Theater. Oh, Congratulations it's fantastic. Congratulations for crying out loud. It's great to be it back here. It must be great to actually open the doors, right? Oh, was it's it a very 20, special moment. Was it the 23rd that you started? Or the 26th was the was official the opening 26th. night. It was the 26th. It was a Thursday, right? Yes. You opened on a Thursday. Yes. Right? Okay. And it's a very special time. It's the 60th anniversary of the founding of the Living Theater. When? This season uh, now? This year. Oh, and wonderful. It's 60 years since Judith and Julian founded it in 47. Wow. And it's also Judith's 80th birthday this year. Mazel tov. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> lady of the theater. Finally, we've decided it's time to come back home. Come back. And home. set up a space that can start to be a a focal point for an alternative point of view here. Yeah, it's like it's like Frank Zappa said, when everything else fails, we all come back to New York. <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, welcome. Well, we Let me introduce you all, although I don't think you need an introduction to New oh, York City. Seven. But welcome to Conversation Pleasure. Welcome to the directors of the Living Theater itself, which is leaving, breathing new life into New York City. They have a new location right here in, the heart, in New York City. And is down on the Lower East Side, right near Katz's Delicatessen, I understand, <laughs> That's or true. off Essex Street. And what is the address? Yes. The address is 21 well, Clinton, Clinton Street. Street. 21 South Clinton. Houston Street. And does it have a name, the Living Theater? It's called the Living Theater. The and Living it's just Theater. below Houston Street on Clinton Street, which, if you're not familiar with the East Village, is the actual continuation of Avenue B below okay. Houston Street. Okay, very good. And uh, it's a great neighborhood. It's a ch fast-changing neighborhood. Some feel it's gentrifying perhaps a little too much, and certainly storefront rents and a lot of uh, those things have gotten outrageous. They have, haven't they? They have, Have yes. you noticed how outrageous the rents Well, we're paying high rent ourselves, yeah, so we I know very it's painfully, ridiculous. Well, painfully it's well. It's ridiculous. And yet there's still a core, a core population of, of, of Hispanic people who are not paying those high rents, and so there's still, at least for now, a real mixed population, and now, that makes it politically interesting. You people trade in the English language and so forth, so when we talk to the theater, we're going to go down to the theater tonight to see Hannon and Judith and Troop in uh, The Brig. The yeah, Brig yeah. is our opening production. Do, do we say we're going to go down to the Living Theater Theater? The or Living do we Theater. Say just the Living just Theater. The theater you don't say it. the Living theater. theater Theater. You don't need to no. do that. You don't, don't need to, to say do the double choice. No. Oh, okay. No, this okay, is okay. a play that Judith right. created first in 1963. God bless you. And uh, it was a quite a huge impact then. Yeah. It's a expose of the brutality of conditions in the United States Marine Corps uh -huh. military brig. Uh -huh. And uh, the playwright had had this experience. He'd been imprisoned in such a place, and he wrote a play about it. Mm -hmm. And Judith staged it in a brilliant way. Uh, she had just read Artaud, the French theoretician of the theater for the f uh, first time, had been translated into English. And so uh, this Artaud is... Artaud is great. And this is the first American production that reflects Artaud's theater, mm -hmm. of a theory of creating a theater whose physicality is such that it produces in the spectator a deep desire for change. Is uh -huh. that how you would Yes, I would it? say it that way. Is Artaud associated with theater of the absurd? No, oh, that's no. Ionesco. He's, Ionesco, He's right. associated with theater of cruelty. Cruelty, you know, cruelty, cruelty, really, that's yes. interesting, yeah. <laughs> and then there was also theater of poverty or something? That's or Grotowski. Grotowski, yes. right. They have yes. all these people that, theater is such a rich thing. Like, did you, did you, you don't see movies that much. Did you ever see the movie, the new movie, Moulin Rouge or not? Yes, we saw Moulin Rouge did you on, like that? on the airplane. I, I liked it. It was an ed good entertainment. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really good, you know, <laughs> a, a, you know to, the, to the bohemian, to the spirit of the artistic community and so forth. God bless the creative community, of which you two are, you know, singular uh, members and so forth. Judith, why don't you talk about it? 60 years now, the yeah. theater? When did it get started? You and Julian started it. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that, and then we can come into talking about well, the Well, maybe you should talk about it coming out of Piscotter, yeah. Uh, well, I'm really a student of Piscotter. <coughs> now, okay. a lot of people don't know who Piscotter is, mm. but they know very well who Bertolt Brecht is, oh. and Brecht was the playwright and Piscotta the director that he most honored uh -huh. and worked with. And the two of them together uh, more or less created modern political theater. Really? Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, when, when my mother actually uh, <clears throat> was a young actress who adored Piscotta uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> and his ideas when she was very young, wanted to work with him, but instead married a rabbi. Mm -hmm. So she gave up her career. Where was that? Where was that? That was in Germany. In Germany? In, in the Germany in the, in, in the in late 20s. 20s. Late 20s, yeah. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. those two young people decided mm -hmm. uh, they were going to, uh, uh, they were going to come to America. 
she was going to give up her career, mm -hmm. but that they would have a daughter uh -huh. who would be an actress instead. Too bad that mother. didn't happen, right? So, <laughs> You're only the, 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 the queen so of the American theater. I was predestined uh -huh. not only to be in the theater, uh -huh. but even predestined to work with Piscotter. Uh -huh. Because right. Piscotter came to America okay. many years later for the same oppression, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. many years later, we came here in uh, 1928, yeah. and uh, I think Piscotter came in the late 38. 30s, uh -huh. 38. Uh -huh. And Piscotter, when Piscotter came, it was just the right time for me to finish high school uh -huh. and go to his dramatic workshop. Okay, and was he was was he yeah. escaping Nazism? Or? Yes, yeah. he was a communist. So, so many yes. did. He, he, he yes, was he was a, a communist. He was a communist, right? Yes, a commie. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I, I tend to like most of the commies I've met. I think they're good <laughs> souls. I mean, the people that are that socialist bent and so forth tend to have... It's been a fine movement. It's yeah. had a lot of uh, awful <laughs> awful misinterpretations, yeah. like uh, Stalin's. But yes. uh, as an idea, it really is a, is a shining example. Also, I did a thing with Lynn Stewart the other day. who's a great lawyer, a defender of people in terms uh, yes. of human rights and all that sort of thing. And she thinks uh, China looks awfully like a capitalist kind of thing. It was a Marxist kind of thing that informed that socialist revolution of Mao, and she was a believer in Mao, but it seems to have been co-opted. Much of the world seems to have been co-opted by the model of the capitalist system. Oh, yes, it's in oh, that no phase right now, it. for sure. Would you two be thinking in terms of political theater? Okay, that's really good, political theater. Uh, you'd be more like in a, in the tradition of, uh, of like an anarcho tradition? Or yes, we're in oh, the yeah, anarchists. anarchists. We consider oh, ourselves definitely. anarchists. Now, yes. how do you differentiate? They're both in opposition to the status quo and a very yes. real anarchist, let's say Marxist, for want of a better yes, term, well, or leftist. And that. Yes, but so I mean, how do you differentiate those two, and where? how does it break down in terms of Well, the of primary the difference is that the traditional socialist model, or uh -huh. Marxist model, is one of the state structure that is supposed to be the interim uh, vehicle of satisfying people's basic needs uh -huh. uh, more uh, equitably. Mm -hmm. And it's imagined that a revolutionary state could be created mm -hmm. that would execute the will of the people. We anarchists are a little more skeptical oh, about, about the power not being ultimately corrupting. Uh -huh. And we feel that it can all be done without investing power in the state, and no. people can form freer associations right. and accomplish the same purposes without running into the problems that they run uh -huh. when they uh, when they abdicate power to right. others. Yeah, you have a great love for the examples of Barcelona and so forth. Oh, I yes, yes, the Spanish Revolution. Right. There have been quite the a few Spanish good Revolution examples. The Spanish Revolution was having that, it wasn't a socialist thing. No, it, it was, was largely was anarchist. anarchist. It was. In Barcelona, it was really a happening place. Yeah. There were a lot of examples of community organization and yes. that kind of thing that was a real example on that side of yeah, it. No, the whole city of Barcelona yeah. was run for several years uh -huh. uh, with only anarchist councils uh, doing the organizing uh -huh. and was truly an anarchist organization. They were beginning to uh, do without money. Uh -huh. uh, uh, certainly certain things like transportation and so on yeah. were already gratis. Mm -hmm. And but I think we're getting to the point where we're beginning to see that the bottom line being uh, the economic line is not really sustainable as the, and, and that's the primary change that needs to happen. And that's what the anti-global movement is really about. You it's an anti-capitalist it movement in fun. Uh, and I think it's the profit system that has to uh, evolve into another form mm -hmm. and in order to be uh, functional in terms of what's happening in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. there are those who say that watersheds will be the political entities of the future. Uh -huh. um, and the you know, ecological thing? Uh, yeah, that, thing the, of, yeah, yeah, that yeah. the management of our, econo uh, of our natural resources are going to, by force of emergency, become the basis of our politics rather than how much money can be made. Oh, that kind of thing. So, but you're both in a certain, uh, the, both tendencies are, the time, I used to think about Arto. who's the theater of the UNESCO, right? It's the theater because of the it seems absurd, to me yes. like the politics and so forth, like Mr. Bush, yeah. and the things that are going, That's it, pretty it, absurd, it, it's yes. like, it's hard to be satirical because it's so absurd, the reality that comes over the, do you feel that way as you look at the news and that kind of thing like that? 
I mean, yeah, I feel the news I mean, has that that satirical quality. I mean, just, but in the theater, I'm not very interested in satire. Oh, I not. think it's a weak form of criticism. Really? Okay. I think, uh -huh. of course, there's been a lot of great satire in the world, yeah. and I don't want to put Bruce. it all down. Lenny but, Bruce. But I don't Lenny think that's Bruce what we Jonathan need Swift. nowadays. <laughs> Jonathan Swift, eat the children, right? Yeah. I don't think we need that now. You don't? No. Did we at one time, and now we don't? Or what? What? When did yeah. we need it? When people were more ambiguous uh -huh. about the question of uh, right and wrong, I think that, that since the uh, revolutionary movement of the 68, uh -huh. uh, there's been Thank a you. I like that very too, yeah. profound change. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't think it was a revolution that failed. I think you it don't. was a revolution that is succeeding. Uh -huh. And no, I think we've every come to a day, very positive more point, and yeah. more people yeah. are beginning to understand uh -huh. that the problem isn't this government or that government or even this form of government or that form of government, but government, that the whole concept of the authoritarian hierarchy is mm -hmm. wrong and that there is a better way uh -huh. to organize ourselves. I think ourselves. people arrive yeah. at this sort of secondarily, yeah. not as the focus of their concentration. It uh -huh. seems to me what's exciting uh -huh. is that people are focusing on the fact that poverty yeah. can be eliminated from the world. Yeah, that's for, the, the first yeah. Time, for the first time, for the on first a mass time, scale. On yeah. a mass yeah. scale, people yeah. are beginning to, to believe that this is possible. Uh -huh. And this is very exciting. And at the same time, I think they're also beginning to reject the military option okay. as something yeah. that we ought to be sanguine about accepting as a, as, as a civilized alternative to any conflict, that, they're, that, we, that we're ready to say, no, whatever the conflict is, we find a peaceful way to resolve it. We don't resort to killing people. Yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. And I think we're getting close to that. Well, the end of poverty and, and the end of war, those right. are kind of two biggies in yeah. terms of casting our eyes back over what Jamie, J Jimmy Joyce, as you said, called the uh, history, is a, history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Yeah. Those are two biggies if we could well, get to them. It was what are the rationales for wh or the, ra the understandings of why it is something's changed that makes it possible for this new thing to be birthing as a Well, world. you know, it was... What's it, different between this and history is Dwight the question. Eyzenhower already said in the Military 50s... industrial. That's, but he also said yes. that someday the people will want peace so badly uh -huh. that the government is going to have to step out of the way and let them have was it. Was it the government or the generals? The it government. Was the gov it was the, the government. government. Yes. So that's, the gov that's a critique of government, yes. that kind of thing. So that's an ethnic... Well, the generals work for the government. They uh -huh. don't work for anyone yeah. else. Yeah. Murray Bookshin was one of the people that oh, wrote absolutely. on that very oh, well. Oh, sure. Yeah. And who were some of the great anarchists? Uh, Noam Chomsky. Uh, Noam Chomsky, you count that way. I would count that way. Uh, and uh, Emma Goldberg. Emma Goldman, Emma Goldman. Uh, Goldman, I mean, yeah. And, and, and uh, Alexander Berkman. Okay. The yeah. classical ones of Kropotkin. Kropotkin. Uh, and, uh, Bakunin. Uh, Bakunin. Bakunin. Uh -huh. And Ma Godwin. Mm -hmm. Godwin in England, yes. And who are the proponents now in the modern world? You say Chomsky would be put Chomsky would, would be a good example place, of, right? of, of a modern-day anarchist. Mm. But Bookchin, who we... Uh, did he just die? I don't know. No, I Paul Average just died, though, and he yeah. was it's one of the leaders. It's a shame that uh, French people are with alarming regularity. You know, it seems to be that the people do. I don't think God should be something that's just appointed up in the sky. I think he should be elected. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, are you with me on that? I think God should be elected. I don't elected. think anybody should be elected. Right. I'm an anarchist. Would you let God be elected? I'd like to run for God. Okay. I'm, and I'm an anarchist. Would I, get your I won't vote, vote for you. Would I get you. your vote if you I'm voting no. for you? Don't, no. You wouldn't get your vote? Not even, not even me? I'm an, an anarchist. anarchist. I don't vote. Do you want vote. to hear my platform? No, Rule I'm an anarchist. Rule number one, I don't if you had the universe that. set up right. Rule number one, hot fudge Sundays would be good for you. <laughs> that doesn't intrigue you, apparently, right? <laughs> and um, But secondly, oh, well, never mind. I'm just making a lame attempt at a... Well, we were but I think there are some there are some universal consciousness and universal ontologic realities that are emerging that call for a new understanding out of history. And I like that line, history is a nightmare. Do you or do you think when you cast back and you think through it, most of the time there's always been some brute running things, some mafia down protection action. Uh, you know, thing. It's it's just a matter of political people fighting over turf. I don't know and that, that it makes sense thing. to say that the and past the, the was the masses more were always wallowing around in the mud. You know, they never had a chance to have much of anything. You don't see history that way, or do I, you? I see this as a, you know, from caveman to today, 
people are competitive, period. Uh-huh. They are competitive. Now what do we do about uh-huh. it? That's what's interesting. Okay. How do we change it? Mm. How do we make it more loving, mm. more humane? Uh-huh. How do we get rid of the abuses? Uh-huh. I don't care about talking about how bad people are. No, I, I don't think it helps. Oh, not necessarily bad, but just the situation. Like the, the, the evolution, I, I did a thing the other day with some people, and they got things, they, they, they study the evolutionary process is a big thing, and the, the, the vegetation in a certain sense, what is that process when there's certain kinds of conditions, they have a thing where they call it uh, climax vegetation, but you have a thing called natural, if you take a map of the world, the best map to have in your mind is a climatic map, mm-hmm. and you can superimpose upon that uh, uh, natural vegetation, the kind of vegetation that emerges naturally out of that kind of a situation right. like that, you can you can apply that kind of a thing, that kind of a thing uh, uh, to to it. But that that is a competitive process that's going on in terms of this plant is going to fight for uh, sunlight and they're going to fight for you know the means to survive or a lot of that kind of thing goes on within the animal kingdom that sort of thing. So the well, we could we we could put a toe in that water and please. stop killing animals, stop Absolutely eating animals, agree with you. begin oh. to. Treat animals with the respect they deserve. Oh, I think that's the, one thing we can do right away. I think the animal rights thing is about to burst wide open in this I country. I think so Particularly too. Particularly the first application, if I suggest, is going to be with the way they treat the animals in those farms, mm-hmm. the chickens, oh. and the uh, things that are raised for it them. Is, it is. It is absolutely cruelty beyond all belief. Those chickens. You ever go to see one of those? We've seen them on television. They're absolutely yeah. stark I raving can't mad. Stand. They keep them in a thing where they're like this and everything. And I really think there's going to be a reaction against no, that. No, we're working with Peter Singer and the okay. Animal Liberation concept on a theater piece about this. Yeah, Yeah, the theater is a good way to convey things. Right? Though I'm less interested in yeah, just pointing at the yeah. abusive right. treatment of the animals as mm. the more interesting question of who are we to each other? Yeah, right. Uh, mm. You know, let's, let's get another look of who the other species are to us and, yeah. and begin to develop a, a real relationship mm. with and them. And a real respect for them. Yeah. All right. There, there can be respect. No, there's, you, you know, you, if you, you, you get the competition thing and the thing is, um, you, you know, I just saw a thing 600 million years ago. Did you read that thing? I, I, do you watch television? Yes, you don't we watch, yeah. mostly documentaries. I think, I think documentaries. They got such good stuff on television. Oh, yeah. Now. We and love the documentaries. Oh, yeah, and we watch them. When you realize that there is a huge archive building up behind what happens to come on on Tuesday night or something, mm-hmm. and you get something on Tuesday night and it's totally riveting. Right. It's so good science, good understanding, right. educational right. of the highest order. They had a thing on there 600, I think it's almost 600 million years ago. For instance, all fauna was in the form of unicellular spongiforms. Mm -hmm. That's as far as they'd got, you know, from four point billion years ago Mm -hmm. when it started. They did so. If you're there, you're in a steady state. You're in a steady state thing. There is an impetus, you know. You could say you can just see the spongiforms going around, saying, "This is cool." This is nice. We're at this level. It was, you know, that, it was, let's put up some curtains. You know, let's just get this nice. <laughs> or there's an impetus to change or to come up out of the primordial ooze. If we'd stayed there, we'd still be in it. So that impetus to change and transformation is an important thing we don't want to lose sight of, right? As we, I don't. I think it's intrinsic to us. I don't think we can get rid of it. It's part of us. The, the urge for the urge to change. Do you the think you can, you can summon any sort of purpose to evolution? Or is it all just chance and necessity, as a lot of the natural scientists would say? I don't know. We go off on science and things like that. Well, but teleology is there, of is purposes. There a, is there a teleology? Is there a purpose to our being here? I mean, if we don't resort to some religious thing or something. But, yeah, you know, but I'm asking, are you? do you ask me if I believe in God? No, I didn't mean Well, how that. is it different? I don't know. <laughs> What's different between... What's it all about, God. Judith? That's what I well, want to know, Alfie. You know, what's it all about? That kind of thing. But uh, does it have a purpose? It yeah. That, that's that's a question. What do you think? I or think is it so. just all you do? I think so yeah. because uh, because I uh, I think each human being has to take themselves as a model of humanity on some level. Okay. On some level. We're the model that we know best. Uh-huh. And the urge, mm. the urge for a purpose, yeah. the urge for some meaning mm-hmm. of what you say to me and mm. I say to you, mm-hmm. uh, the urge for it to have uh, uh, this, this quality of, of transcendence, mm-hmm. that we want to transcend yeah. 
that somehow... I sure do. I want to get out of here. <laughs> I feel like we're in the womb. I feel like I feel we need Frederick Douglass. I still feel like we're in a slave system. We are. We are in a slave yes. system. Right, but now and it seems to be accepted. Well, now it seems sort of, that there are... It's like a, a pregnancy. Well, now it you seems like there are... feel like we're gestating. We've been gestating, and we're about to come to a, a moment of qualitative liberation or transformation. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I think so. It's of course, that's I only within wrongly, yeah. our dimension, and now the... Mm -hmm current thinking is that there are 11 dimensions. I know. Isn't that some <laughs> Kaku? Have you seen Kaku yeah. stuff lately? Yeah. And it's four, it may be 12. Oh, could it Maybe also be 12. 12. Yeah, Maybe 14 and a half. <laughs> but it might be soap bubbles. It's like soap bubbles with wormholes. And that may be an escape cause when they, yes. you know, be, but yeah, it's interesting. But I, I didn't mean to lead you off where you were. But we're in that. And so Fuller used to talk about, he said that he cast about for some anti-entropic function because second law says everything moves to chaos. Mm -hmm. And I guess in a couple trillion years it'll move to chaos or something like that. But, but that the uh, biological process was an anti-entropic or synergistic anti-entropic syntropic function that moves across chaos and brings the conscious understanding to the process of, or against entropy, to the process of which we are a part and that we are in a certain sense apexing that now so that we have a purpose in life which is to move forward yes. and we may be there was a consciousness in Australopithecine five million years ago there was the Australopithecus uh, Homo habilis, Holo erectus and then we appeared and there will be a higher level of consciousness along that evolutionary path at some point and maybe we're at that point that's what we're, or we're coming to that point and I want to say something about your your sense that us as far as we've advanced, we're still enslaved. I feel that. We're still, and you feel that, and I think ultimately every sensitive person feels that, mm. and that is what our play, The Brig, is about. Yeah, okay. I say The Brig is not about a military prison. Uh -huh. The Brig is about your life. Uh -huh. The Brig is about the life of every person mm. that's in servitude to a monetary system, yeah. a class system, right. a system in which one part of the population abuses the other part. Which has been going on with alarming regularity through all, all the history. Long history. Yeah, doesn't all it seem along. that way to you? Let's break out of that. Yeah, well, Let's could, break out of that system. People have wanted to break out of it. You can't break out. A pregnancy, women know better, better than men perhaps, but a pregnancy is nine months. And then the time comes. It doesn't come at seven. It, it couldn't have come seven months, seven months in pregnancy for the Homo sapien would have been back about 50,000 years ago. It couldn't come at a certain time. There's a developmental gestating phase. Or in evolution, it's a quantitative change. And then Gould, Stephen Jay Gould and Eldridge, they say that the, uh, the, the new, the species, it comes all at once. It's called punctuated equilibrium. It happens as the time approaches. It happens very, a me, a very, in a very short period of time. We may be at that kind of a time, almost like a going to a metaphor of speciation or something collectively. Maybe a speciation of a collectively liberated human humanity or something that there never has been, or what? Maybe I think that there never has been. Never has been a time. I yeah. think it never has been because we've reached a point in our technology yes. where we're either going to destroy our species and our planet and everything or we're going to be wake up to our responsibility to each other and the technology rules in this yeah. because if we're not going to change the technology now mm. from its wild path toward destruction mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that when we come to that realization, mm -hmm. which we've never had to come to before, mm -hmm. because we've never had it in the palm of our hands to destroy right. humanity. We never That's had what's it. different. Never been Absolute, like that. Never, never. That's what's different. That's right. And that's what's going to make us realize, oh, my God, I don't want to destroy everything. i got grandchildren. Yeah, I, I mean, got no, a great no, granddaughter. No, and, and, and the folks in China have grandchildren and all. I mean, because, because you're quite right, I think, and it really is essential. I think we've probably talked about this. In the, but, you know, in the Second World War, we were still protected in our input. We could bomb Dresden. We could bomb Hiroshima. We could do this kind of thing, for killing each other. But we were protected in our impotence as recently as that, as far as destroying the species. Right. Michio Kaku and others tell now. us now if the weapons are unleashed at the end, Without a doubt, he tells me, having studied with Teller, 
and everything like that. With I did it, we aired it a couple of weeks ago. He, without a doubt, we would it would mean the end of the whole species. Not inflection points of theory of relativity or thoughts, but actual in the world existing things on hair trigger alert. And if they're unleashed, it's the end of the whole enterprise of the hominoid line, which is an existential new reality. Don't you think that ought to be it's called new. attention to? It's new. The mm -hmm. realization yeah. couldn't happen in, second, in our lifetime. And this realization is going to either change us mm -hmm. or, alas, we would be lost. But those of us who are committed optimists, yeah. and we are sort of... Uh, sort of committed optimists? Sort of kind of kind of committed optimists? No, definitely <laughs> committed just, optimists. I'm just yeah. kidding with you. Pessimism you know? is cheap. Yeah, you know? pessimism oh, is cheap pessimism. and easy in New York City. <laughs> Anybody yeah. can be yeah. a pessimist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to be an optimist. But those are themes that resonate in theatrical, the uh, theatrical political theater calls out for expressions of that existential reality that humanity yes. finds itself in now, and there's too little of it? Right. Right? Yes. Do you agree with me on that? Well, it's we are much, working uh, very hard at kind of it. Stuff. Yeah. We're working very hard at it. Now, you've got the brig. You're doing that now. Right. Yeah, now and that's, that's certainly not a Pollyanna uh, piece of work. It's yeah. a very gruesome, difficult play. Yeah. But it, it, it gives a sense of how important it is to escape the enslavement. Mm -hmm. And it demonstrates how we have learned to make young people that are decent young people, decent people like, uh, like all of us here, yeah. nice people, go out and commit such atrocities. Abu Ghraib. As Abu Ghraib, uh, as, as Guantanamo, I as know. have been committed yeah. throughout history right. by all armies, yeah. irrespective of where or when. Right. Armies do this, mm -hmm. why? Mm -hmm. And what we show in the brig and what Ken Brown's play demonstrates is how a person can be trained to a certain kind of obedience. Yeah, right. And that oh, that is yeah. a biomechanical obedience that is trained into them when they drill and when they march and when they learn to say, yes, sir. Uh -huh. Well, and we have a wonderful cast of very young uh, recruits who are playing these soldiers that needed to be 20-year-olds, and yeah. they are 20-year-olds, and uh -huh. several of them have just come out of the service, right. and veterans. Okay. One of them is actually a Marine. They've had so, all their training. So uh, they know they know what it's about. But in order to be with living theater, they got to have a different tact in terms of their consciousness, in terms of what that training was trying to teach them to be, which were autonomous. Oh, yeah, well, they're, they're coming to us meant yeah. that they were ready for that. Because <laughs> they've, uh, they're reacting to it negatively. I think there's a strong reaction against it. A lot of people go into that because of economic necessity, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. yeah. And patriotism is a strong thing, isn't it? It it's is. A, it's, I mean, but it's a political tool more than anything. It's, yeah. it's mostly used as a political tool. It makes it easy for the folks to manipulate the people. Yeah, but it's hard to gainsay the way the movement is trying to say that those who are saying that they want to bring the troops home are equally patriotic yeah. as those who say they want them to stay. Uh, it's not. That's not a pa an issue of patriotism. Yeah. Um, you can love the troops just as well and want them to be safe. See, big difference between Vernot, Vietnam. Remember Vietnam? I guess oh, yes. you do. We do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Ginsberg. I remember World War II. Abby Hoffman and levitating the Pentagon and Woodstock and I all these people yeah. harking back to that time. I think that was a major time of transformation. But we, we live in that kind of a we live in that kind of a time now. There's di so it, it's similar. It seems to me similar in lots of ways. The uh, we got to burn the village to save it. Remember? Actually, yeah, it's that, much yeah, better. Better. Go ahead, talk. The war isn't better. The war is gruesome. Yeah. But there is a realization among people now that didn't exist in the 60s, uh -huh. that didn't exist in 68, or in the early 70s when people were trying to recoup from the enthusiasm into something workable. It didn't exist uh, because we didn't and we hadn't yet yeah. experienced the effort and realizing that we weren't ready. And now, 30 years later, we have another generation that is filled with hope, mm -hmm. that goes out and marches in the streets wow. in the hundreds of thousands, yeah. not against this cause or against that government, but against capitalism uh. itself, mm -hmm. and realizes where the problem is. 
and realizes what we're talking about now, mm. that we're either going to change the world mm. or we're going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And if we don't want to destroy it, we better be out there and change it. It's never been... Why didn't we change the world a hundred years ago? But we did. Why, we did, why didn't we change the well, world? Well, we were changing it. 50 years it, it ago. It changed oh, 50 yeah. years ago. Trying to change it and everything It else. changed all the time. It's been oh. changing all the time. What about the idea, what about the idea that there's something, uh, this gestation thing again, where things gestate at a certain period, they, things have their own time, right? Mm -hmm. Hard-boiled egg is how many minutes? You do it five. so many, you, five, you know? Okay, five or soft-boiled egg, you know. But it, uh, or t uh, there's a process. And we are perhaps, or the young people now, the young people are really, I've read great hope in the young well, people. I just find them great and everything. But they are going to say, we're tripping all over ourselves with institutions that are outdated, that were formulated in the past. And why didn't they take care of things? We used to have chattel slavery, for crying out loud. Chattel slavery, it's hard to imagine. And they had, you know, fugitive slave laws. You got to turn the dude back because, you know, that kind of, it was, you know, but things that are possible for us in a liberating way to make it possible for everybody to be able to read that not only their full biography but their full potentiality right so much is wasted right. it's so inefficient right. but that was not possible so we shouldn't blame too much the elders of the ages past for we conditions that anybody. were not possible for them to realize because it is a result of the technological Well, for one thing, you know, you've got to remember what, you know is, what, what I mean? a short period of time we're talking about. Yeah. All of civilization is 6,000 years yeah. since Sumeria. Right. 6,000 years, when you mm. think that a person lives 100 years, mm -hmm. is no longer than the lifetime of 60 people. Right. So right. that all of history yeah. is no longer than the lifetime of 60 people. Yeah. You, that's not a terribly long time to yeah. work it all out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's that... But there does come a time of qualitative transformation. I mean, you know, four million years ago, we were not here. We were, there was an evolutionary process going on. There was Australopithecine. And the creatures, there's a big difference between self-reflective consciousness that can think about things like we're going to die and things like what the universe is about, that kind of thing. Where you can take the measure, they got a telescope. Do you know they got a telescope? Mr. Kaku told me they got a telescope that's related to the sun and so forth. This is technology extension of consciousness, and they're going to be able to take within 2011, if the financing is in place, they're going to be taking a picture of the shock wave of the Big Bang 14, mm -hmm. 13.7 billion years ago. Yeah. Wow. With, they got one now, a picture of the shock wave within 237,000 years wow. after the shock wave. They're going to be taking it, a picture of it within a millisecond of the B Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago by 2011. I think that's right, 11, yeah. That's really a capability to take the measure of things in a big way, plus the universe is beyond it, they're telling us there may be. So the, the, but w there was no way an Australopithecine could have consciously thought of that. Or you can't blame, in a certain sense, a crocodile for eating an alligator. <laughs> I mean, things, I mean, no, a crocodile eating a, an antelope, actually. Yeah, sure, I mean, you know, sure, that sure. kind of thing. But that, it's the time thing I'm getting at. Maybe the time comes, and this is a time of qualitative, that's what I'm getting at. It couldn't have happened 100 years ago. It couldn't happen 50 years ago. It couldn't have happened 200, 300 years ago. So those people were living in a time that just didn't have anything like the potential mm -hmm. potentiality for destruction or perhaps for something qualitatively new on the liberated side, which might be the promise of the age we find ourselves. People probably thought these are amazing times in front of the Cro-Magnon fires. Mm -hmm. Sure. But sure. it really and truly is now. Do you feel that? Oh, yes. That? I feel it's a very new moment. Yes. A very hopeful moment. Have you felt that all And your I life? see a generation mm. that is rejecting the whole idea that they are not, uh, uh, that it all happened in 68. This whole idea of, of, of glorifying the past. Mm -hmm. I think we should study the past. Yeah. I think we should we'll study history. Them. But mm. I think we should get rid of that now uh -huh. and look at what the future brings, uh -huh. what's possible. Yeah. The young generation is being told, oh, well, we did that in 68, but that's not possible today. You were born too late. And they're saying, what do you mean I was born too late? Mm. I'm here now, mm. and I want a better world, mm -hmm. and, and I see that we're working in an economic structure 
It can't work for the people on bottom. This is, and the people on bottom are the many. That's the 90% of the population not well served by the institutions that we've inherited out of history. It's right. been the 10% are well served. Gated communities happening in China now, and they serve each other. And uh, it just will not work, particularly well, what if, happens is that when you have 10%, uh, suddenly uh, that when China develops 10% of a wealthy upper middle class, that given that there are a billion and a half people. That's a lot of people. That we're talking yes, about. Yeah. yeah, you're talking real talking money like Ed Dirksen used to couple say. A couple hundred yeah. million yes, very rich yeah. people. That's yeah. a lot of very rich people. Yeah, but it still begs uh, the issue about the whole thing, the yeah. whole the whole of the humanity, uh, on the whole, the whole of humanity. And like, I've used this thing, if you don't mind, as a metaphor, that in the human, a human organism has a hundred, did you realize a hundred trillion cells mm -hmm. in a human organism? Really? A hundred trillion it makes trillion the internet cells. look simple mm -hmm. and each one matters mm -hmm. and they all overlay with the design they all have a design and they form a system and so if you take that analogy it, it, biological analogies are dangerous now if you take that analogy to the social like Gaia mm -hmm. and you draw from the earth it's like a thing everybody should if one cell goes wrong in your body and it runs away it's called cancer it's a system. It's got to work, and they need to have the oxygen. Everything works autonomically, and so forth. So that kind of and the humanity, the vast majority of humanity, is so ill-served in terms of being able to realize a mother in India. Well, you know, there's she, the other model. She's going to decide which of her two children she's going to let starve to death because there's not enough food, and yet the system knows it has enough now in a way that perhaps they historically didn't to feed everybody in overwhelming abundance. We don't have a system that lets us do what we're capable of doing is schizophrenia. But, you know, the model you talk about when you talk about the body and its composition of all these cells um, as a single unified entity, mm. that's one important part of it, but that's complemented by the other whole complementary half of it, which is our interaction with all these other organisms yeah. that we live in, right. as part of our colonial reality. Absolutely, um, yeah. that we yeah. are colonized by. Yeah, we all walk in a sea of bacteria, and always, and it's all one. And, and, and other microorganisms. Yeah, viruses that are, also. Yeah, that are that are important. Or the whole ecology. Yeah, the whole important part of our. Uh, Do you like the idea of John Lovelock, the Gaia principle, yes. where they draw off and see the Earth? They go off and see it as an organism. Yes, I think it makes sense. Uh -huh. Sure. Uh -huh. But you know, it's just one level. It's not the level. Uh, it's it's one perspective that that it's good to have. But I think that we have to keep these. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 delighted to know that you've been talking with Kaku. I think he's great. He's also. marvelous, absolutely yeah. marvelous. You know who he is. Yeah. He's yes, that's sure. Yeah. Oh, he's grand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there are others yeah. too. There are others too. And then we've all got the tradition of Murray Bookshin. God bless him. Yes. Uh, he's up in he was up in Massachusetts, a little downhearted because. A lot of the thinking, he and Fuller, Fuller was just absolutely right. great. We always talk about Fuller. Some of the people that are comprehensive. Right, we were close with Leary, uh, who just died also, yeah. Who? Leary, Tim Leary. Yeah. Tim Leary. We yeah. got a period, of interview we did with him up on YouTube. Now. Uh -huh. You can see he was a grand, he was a good guy. Yeah. There were a lot of good guys, but there was happening. But that's 68 in this time. I'm of the opinion 1970 was a magic year. I don't, I'm oh, yes. about the only person who thinks that, or I say that's like year one. In the fullness of time, it's going to be seen as year one. Because I think that's when, and Master Kaku will inform me, that's about the time when the weapon systems got to the point where they were species lethal. And that was also the time that Bookchin on the anarcho side. It was the time of Kent State, Fuller. it was the time of the Panther Trial in New Haven. Yeah, Haber. but it's also the time uh, of philosophical world game and reading the resource capability and pro putting forth the proposition that we were transcending in terms of a systems, systems understanding, the iron, the, uh, we were uh, uh, scarcity, material scarcity on this planet that we could provide right. for everyone without having to take from one to have the other one benefit. There was enough for everybody and the ecology. We crossed that line about 1970. Mr. Fuller, Mr. Bookshin felt that way. Yeah. I did. And um, yeah, we've, solved that was a we've, we've, we've solved the scarcity problem. It's really not. Well, we haven't solved it yet when you see we've a solved, world no, where we, it's we've not solved the scarcity, qua scarcity problem. We haven't solved the distribution problem. We haven't did this distribution. The distribution we problem is the problem. Yeah, <laughs> and we don't have a system that allows us to do, in a certain sense, we don't, uh, we don't have a system that lets us do what we know we're capable yeah. of doing. Yeah. But and all that is going to drive people crazy, people of good conscience. But yeah. a whole generation of young people are watching television, and they're seeing on the news 
these fields of starving people, yeah. these thousands of people live, living on, on the ground without anything. I know, Daffer. And they know, mm -hmm. they know there's enough that could feed those people and save them. Uh -huh. And they're asking themselves, what stands between taking this abundance uh -huh. and bringing it over there? Uh -huh. Is it the transportation? No. Uh -huh. There are plenty of people would be very glad uh -huh. to transport the food to the starving people. Uh -huh. What is it? Uh -huh. It's a system. Uh -huh. It's an economic system that says this food cannot go to these people because of an economic structure that won't permit it. And that's why those people are starving. And these young people want to get rid of that economic structure uh -huh. that prevents that food from going to those people. And invited that, to Caracas, by the way. Oh, good, the, good, so good. With Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chavez and yeah. company, yeah? yeah. He's just, oh. He just did some nationalization of the of oil the resources. Oils, yeah. the oils. And I, I did two years. I didn't know if you ever talked to you, but I never you knew two years where I lived in Bolivia among the Aymara. Uh -huh. So I was really happy when I found out that Mr. Morales won the first yeah. time after. They were treated shabbily for 400 years yes. after Pizarro. Well, that was and a major now the victory. Aymara, yeah, the Aymara Indian peoples, uh, and it, it, that, 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 that's a sign, that's a positive sign. Probably. Well, all of Latin America, yeah, Ecuador, all over the place, it's interesting things are happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Particularly there, yeah. yeah. Now we got the, the other kind of, the other kind of thing, and this is all, yeah, but you think that, that, we, that people have wanted to do that. What, is there, an, who's the best to say it's economics then? It's economics is the problem. If the people in Africa, if everybody, let's just say, for the heck of it, if everybody in Africa had a, let's just say, every one of the people in Africa had an income, just to say where it comes from, don't say, but if everyone had a $100,000 income, mm -hmm. their problems would be taken care of by the, sure. by the system. That then there'll be another run The problem class. is they don't have enough demand or enough capability to buy what's ca capable of being produced, is it? Is that the problem? No. I don't think $100,000 to anyone or to everyone is going to make the, the capitalist system work any better. I just think that, you know, then there'll be those people will be all right, and then there'll be another underclass because the whole economic structure okay, what is kind based of, on an underclass. But is it, or you think, okay, think and that, so. that's the thing. So what would be the solution, do you think? I mean, we, we're, you're Well, we're first of all, we could abolish money. Abolish because money, Money okay. takes, absolutely has no use. It's a bookkeeping mm. device to figure out who works how long, who uh, produces what, what products go here and there. No. Uh, who who moves things from here to there? Mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to do with any reality. It's a bookkeeping device, mm -hmm. and it's a lousy bookkeeping device. But it's very much in the minds of many people on this planet. How can I get money? Even even me? Right? Yes, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <Yeah. laughs> I'm running yeah. a theater. I yeah. need money. Yeah, right. Of right. course. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. So what happened? How are you going to run your theater if you don't have money to pay for the lights and stuff? And if how, there's no money, you? then they don't have to pay for the lights. Yeah, but do you think the lights will go off then? No, the I don't think go they'll off go off at all. all over the world. I think no. they'll go on all over the world you much would. better. How? And I think it, okay. because money uh -huh. is not a form of making it work. Uh -huh. Money is an obstacle to hmm. making it work. You think it is? Everything will work better. Lights, food, we'll get rid of poverty, we'll get rid of war, because all of these, all of these are simply dimensions of our poor structure, mm -hmm. of the capitalist structure. Mm -hmm. And as long as you believe that giving the poor people $100,000 a piece is going to solve anything Suppose except... They, they got an income, an annual income of $100,000. It's coming steadily. $100, and as long as anybody's got an income, we have a money system, and we have an underclass, and we have dying of hunger. I don't believe... If somebody has a steady income of $100,000, steady, year after year, steady as the Rock of Gibraltar, steady as Social Security. Yeah, a lot of people do. Then those people, in the old days, the old folks in the Depression, they were just destitute in this Yeah, country. well, a lot of they people have $100,000. No, but if the whole world had that. That's yeah, just, but they, they can't do that. We don't know that. We don't know that. If they had $100,000, just say in non-inflationary terms, to use an economic thing, they would have food. 
And they I would said, go down and they would be able to buy a food and the things that they are produced and so forth with the money if they had it. So it's a matter of how do you get money to the people so they can buy what can be produced. At least that's the only way you can get money to those people is to have an underclass that has no money and that is starving. Oh. Because the whole structure of capitalism uh -huh. is based on an underclass, is based on the fear of the worker mm -hmm. being pushed into becoming an underclass. Yeah. Uh, the, the worker the, is afraid to enter into the poverty class. Uh, absolutely. This That's keeps the thing him working keep, like at a, work he doesn't like. Like a draft all horse. All his life. Like a draft horse, they got to do it because they don't want to fall in the Dickensian conditions and all that sort of thing. And all, they don't want to slip back. All workers are in that situation. Yeah, all workers are. Most and, of the and, world. And that means that a lot of the world is doing work it doesn't want to do. Absolutely. Is, as it were, enslaved. And, and, and your idea mm. that, that you're going to give everybody a, a $100,000 bill and uh, that this is going to solve or resolve this inequity uh, in our structure, uh, uh, I think is uh, we're not doing very a realistic. Piece. Maybe it would be nice to close. Yeah, let's talk a little about, about the About the piece that we're doing. Yeah, please. Uh, traveling around with about the situation of refugees in okay, the world. Okay, absolutely. Is Huge. Major yeah. topic that yeah, we've good. been dealing with. On and off now, and we found a wonderful text by W. H. Auden, which we're using uh -huh. as the basis for this piece. And maybe we should offer that text. Yes, okay, okay let's good. do that. Uh, okay. It, it, it's called Refugee Blues. Yeah, all right. Mm. Say that in this city there are ten million souls, mm. since some are living in mansions, mm. some are living in holes. Mm. And there's no place for us, my love. There's no place for us. Once we had a country. And we thought it fair. Mm. Look at your atlas, you'll find it there. Mm. But we, we cannot go there now, my love. No, we cannot go there now. In the village churchyard, there grows an old yew. Every spring, it blossoms anew. Old passports can't do that, my love. <laughs> no, old passports can't do that. You know, the consul, he banged on the table and said, If you haven't got a passport, you're officially dead. But we are still alive, my love. Yes, we're still alive. I went to a committee. They offered me a chair and told me politely to come back next year. But where will we go today, Where my will love? we go today? I went to a meeting. The speaker said, if we let them in, they'll steal our daily bread. Uh, they were speaking of you and me, <laughs> my love. They were speaking of you and me. <sighs> I thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was the Imperial Air Force saying... The insurgents must die. We were always in their way, my we love. We were always in their always way. Always in their way. <sighs> I dreamed, I dreamed I saw a building with a thousand floors. And a poodle with a jacket fastened by a pin. And I dreamed I saw a door open and a cat let in, but they weren't Muslims, my dear. And they weren't German Jews like me. Mm. And it would be better, too, if you gather together the outcries against injustice and dried them of tears and did something useful with them. <laughs> I went down to the harbor and I stood on the quay. I watched the fish swimming as if they were free. <laughs> Only ten feet away, my love. Only ten feet away. I walked through the woods. I, I saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians. They sang at their ease. But they, but weren't. they weren't the human race, my love. No, uh, they weren't the human race. Mm. Turn on the TV. You'll see a hundred thousand boots marching across the desert floor. They're yeah. looking for you and me, my love. They're they are looking. looking for you. Ah, bravo! <laughs> bravo. Now, who is that? Where's that from? W.H. Auden. Oh, all right. That's, That's you know, you're doing your traveling, you see. And we've been traveling yeah. in Europe with this, yes. All right. And yeah. with a group of refugees Beautiful. who Beautiful. are telling their own personal story of right. what they've been going through. Right, right. And in the midst of it, they've asked us to perform this. Right. Beautiful. Auden, you do it. And you still, you're still in Italy? you got a place in Genoa? Yes, we've got the Centro oh. Living in uh -huh. uh, Rocchetta Ligure near Genova. Uh -huh. But right now, that's closed while we're concentrating on work in New York. Uh -huh. But we'll be going back in June. Uh -huh. And, and you're setting up the Living Theater 
we're here in New York, thank goodness. Yes. Thank New York's a far better, far, far better place <laughs> now, the Living Theater. Yes. Right. Come see the Brig at the Living Theater. But, but you're doing that, but then you're also traveling, right? Yes, and we you, are also. you got a true, how many of you are there now? There's I about mean, 20 of us. About 20, and do they get over to you? Do you travel yes, around? Yes, we do. Are you still doing the Not In My Name in Times Square at all? Right now in Times Square, we've no. been doing a new piece called No Sir, which is against the Iraq no War. No Sir, that comes out of Brig maybe, huh? Yeah, it's about the Iraq War. You know, they've got this recruiting booth with a recruitment video uh -huh. on a big screen on top of it. Mm -hmm. And we created a piece that interacts with that video. Uh -huh. We use the text that they, that they flash on the screen as the text of the piece we're doing. Right in Times Square. Right in the middle of Times Square. I, I'll send you a clip Didn't of that. Didn't you do a thing with, uh, against execution? Yes, too? we've been also you're at the same it? time doing... Are you doing, still doing that? Are yeah, that's still, not in my name. That's an ongoing project. Not in project. my name. That's yeah. what you do about when they do an execution. Yeah, fortunately, kind of the climate in the country has turned rather against execution, though it's still going on. There's, it's more and more of it being stopped. There's some good signs. You think just politic, uh, all of that, there's a good sign. They voted the Democrats in and that kind of thing, and everything's moving now. And uh, so it's uh, a better, better thing. I think maybe you're going to have to get out of here a little early, right? Yeah, Hannon, I'm going to skip. Dan yes. Hannon's got to go. He's got an important. Will you stay yes. with me for another couple minutes? Well, I, sh I should go with no, you. No, no, no. I'll be waiting. I'll go get the car right right by the time I'm there gonna with the car. He's just going to bring the car. He's just going to bring the car and take you and everything. Thanks, Hannon. Great talking to Hannon and Reznikov. And thanks a lot. We'll be in catch with you. So we'll back to you. So we got about five minutes. Yeah, all right. Okay. So it's so good to see you. And Hannon's in such good form, and I'm so glad. So you're being in New York. How much of the time of year of the year and so forth? Oh, now? I wish it was 100 percent of the time, but we have to spend a couple of months in Italy. Italy, by and large. Well, life. Italy and Europe will be yeah, traveling. Yeah. And you're performing over there all the time. Uh huh. And you're picking it up. You're picking up Italian. Do you perform in Italian? Or yes, we you? perform in you Italian, perform Spanish, in French, German, and Portuguese. You do? Yes, you can. Do. You can speak all those languages adequately on the stage yes. and everything like yeah. that. Can you learn the words the way you do to learn a song, to do it in another language? Or do you speak those languages philosophically? Well, most of our plays have audience interaction. Yeah, I know you so always have So we have, have to that. speak the language, more uh -huh. or less, yeah. Well, that's good. That yes, keeps our, you our, alert uh, and that kind of stuff. Our right? actors do speak the language. But you think of New York as your home, right? I think of New York as the place where it's going to happen, and I what want to be gonna here. Happen? What's it's going to happen? What's what is going to happen? Uh-huh. Ideally, a great wake up day or something, a great wake up morning. There used to be a song. Let's yeah. call it the yeah. beautiful, non violent anarchist revolution. Okay, that's a Because I think that's our real future. The world will jump up all at once. No, the they will not jump up all at once. No, they won't. But okay. you and I will work our Magic, lives magic. off. All right, yeah, yeah. Our lives <coughs> off yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. We, it will not happen all at once. Mm -hmm. The world is going to struggle and suffer until people realize that we can make this change. Yeah. A positive change, uh -huh. a change without punishment, without armies, without prisons, mm. without governments, without money. Mm. A change of how we behave with each other. Uh -huh. A really altruistic form of society, which is possible. It is possible now. Wherever For it's, everybody. It's tri been tried. Wherever uh -huh. it's been tried, it right. worked. Uh -huh. It was tried in Spain yeah. in the 30s. Uh -huh. It was tried in the Ukraine under Makhno uh -huh. in the teen years. Why didn't it work? Why? Well, in Spain it didn't work. Because we had the a guy fascism, named Franco, yeah. Yes, because mm. of fascism and, yeah. the, and the Spanish uh, fascist revolution. Yeah, right. In, in, in the Ukraine it didn't work uh, because... The beautiful vision of communism mm -hmm. uh, turned into a tyrannical form mm. and into a repressive form mm -hmm. that it was never meant to be in the beginning. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it wiped out. out the anarchist principles. Uh -huh. any, were there any anarchical principles in China or not? Or what? Oh, or yes. India? Oh, yeah. yes. There's, there's, there's an anarchist tradition. movement now in China. Uh, there is, yeah. Okay, like yeah. that. But there's a lot of things going on like that. But it's all coming great, get up, going, and everything like that. And it's so good to see you again. I agree with you. I think the times, they are really getting ripe for a real change. I, I, I just think, I don't know about that. I think maybe there, there has to be some way to, if it's transcended scarcity and so on, we might be able to subsume the system rather than cutting off anybody's head or something. Well, I you certainly know? wouldn't want to cut French off anybody's head. French Revolution, cut off Louis XVI. I'm a pacifist. Head. No, you're a pacifist. No, you're we're talking about a pacifist revolution. Right. Uh, 
non-violent revolution. revolution. I'm not talking about ever cutting anybody's head off uh. under any circumstances. So everybody could be included in this on their own. Do you think you have a thing where everybody's able to be included because it's so comprehensively appropriate? And I the think people it's so who are responsible for the historically inherited institutions outdated I will be included in the end, perhaps? I think that we will, over, we will subsume that system rather and transform it rather than in a certain sense uh, overthrow them in a vile, any kind of a violent way. It would be through consciousness raising. I think it's much more complicated than any of that. Oh. Uh, I think we really... More complicated or less? Yes, much more complicated more com than okay. that. And in a certain <laughs> sense simpler uh -huh. okay. uh, because it's That's based it. on, let's say, the, the doctor's motto, do no harm. Yeah. First, do no harm. Right. If we do no harm, mm -hmm. then how do we transform the world? Mm -hmm. Then how do we get rid of poverty? Mm -hmm. How do we get rid of armies? How do we get rid of borders? How do we get rid of deep, deep conflicts like so, like the ethnic groups have, the right. Sunnis and the Shiites, right. or the Arabs and the Israelis? How do we resolve You think they're all those? interconnected as one problem? They're all connected and you get pattern recognition? You can see patterns you sure. and they all come down to where they, they're all interconnected. There's so many different sources of injustice, and so, but they're all sort of a sense interconnected. We'll maybe get to where the pattern rec information overload permits pattern recognition, and maybe we'll get a pattern recognition to where it will sort of just happen in a in a in a in a in a, in a systems way is what the term. I don't think is. anything will just happen. Okay. I think you and I and every one of us has to work very hard mm. to try to practice altruism, generosity, and kindness uh -huh. in a world that has trained us mm -hmm. to be competitive, mm -hmm. combative, and unkind. And all of the institutions are geared to that kind of hierarchical structure. Virtually all the institutions yeah, so We have to get rid of all the of world, them. All, get rid, just get rid of all of them. All right? of them. And then replace them with an ideal, uh, a world of, uh, of uh, compassion and understanding, a uh, bodhisattva kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. And we may and live at a time where that's possible. Because if we don't manage to pull this off, the stakes are really, as never before, so very, very high. We're uh, going to either destroy the planet, or we're going to take some very, make some very radical changes. What's your bet? If you were Nick the Greek, what would you think? Are we going to make it, or are we going to blow it all up? Oh, I think, think we're going to make it. You I'm do. a, now, I'm you're a not committed optimist. Oh, you're a committed optimist. I'm a right? committed optimist. Not a Pollyanna. Uh, well, not optimist. really, not a because I, I like to call myself an optimalist, optimalist. which is different yeah, from is. optimist. Mm -hmm. An optimist thinks things are going to be all right. Just an optimalist because. works from the position of the optimal possibility. Right. Uh -huh. Work from the best possibility. Uh -huh. You proceed in your art, in your labor, mm -hmm. in your education, mm -hmm. in your daily life, right. uh -huh. from the highest possible level that you can reach, right, which right. is altruistic and loving. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the uh, yeah, it's the thing about that. That's ultimately where we're going, and it's it's a pleasure to be alive and participate in things, uh, the evolution of consciousness in this part of the universe at this particular time. Don't you think? I think so. It's really exciting. It's a great time. It's ever much more exciting now that you're back in great town. Great time. Well, your pleasure to have had the perceptions of the first lady of the theater, uh, Judith Molina. Thanks a whole lot for coming in all the good, well-led life. Everybody should get down to see the brig and other things at the show uh, that's downtown now. I haven't been a chance to bring it up, but you're on the site, The Living, uh, the living, living theater. theater. No, it's just Living on Theater. On Street. Living Theater dot uh, org, right? LivingTheater.org. Yes. LivingTheater.org will bring to. you to our website. Okay, that's really good. Well, thanks an awful lot for coming. So good to see you again, as always, you know. Thank we'll you. be coming back again tomorrow. Thanks for viewing. So just let the tape roll out for right. a second. It really is good to see you again. I want to come down there and, and see the theater. I haven't been down there yet. Wait one second, because there's still, okay. still tape. Just hold yes, it. Yes, I will.